Alrighty then, welcome back to day 9. We've uh, made it quite far so far, so we'll get stuck back into it. Uh, day 9 started at 10 past 1 in the morning, and we decided that, uh, yeah, we'd leave our safe house again, even though we thought that last time we were going to be leaving it would be the last time. This was going to be the last time we are going to leave it for now. So, climbing outside, we started uh, running over to our truck. At this point of the playthrough, I like to start trying to gather some leather strips as soon as possible because leather strips are my go-to for padding out clothes. Grabbed our barbecue because I should have more than enough inventory space this time to put it in our backpack and get into the truck and take it with us because we wanted something to be able to cook with when we got to where we were going. A couple of zombies noticed us putting some stuff away in the truck so we decided that our best was a batch of them and, you know, start cracking on with our journey. Killed the last two members of the uh, goodbye party and jumped in our truck and said goodbye to Rosewood for now. We'll be back to conquer you later, but for now it was good to see the arse end of you. So yeah, we'd set off two alarms here, created a bit of chaos. We knew the zombies were grouped up in the you know main area of town in between those houses. So yeah, best to be getting out of here and setting up a nice safe location where we could survive and then come back and conquer this town at a later date. I almost totally forgot about the uh, wrecks that were up ahead of us and had to slow on the brakes super quick and avoid that crash. I had to really remember they were there because crashing this uh, truck would be disastrous at this point. It was our backbone now, it had all of our stuff and it was essentially our mobile base for now so we didn't want to kill any zombies with it so we tried to swerve down this road the best we could and avoid as many zombies as possible because Zombies killed by truck equals damage to truck and we don't want that so yeah avoiding as many zombies as possible we headed off to our base location. Which happens to be just here at the drive-in theatre. Yes that's correct we are taking over the drive-in theatre as our base and building a base entirely from scratch within the drive-in theatre. There's multiple reasons for this. Um, Pretty easy location to close off with a few fences, so yeah, you got that. You've got one huge open area that's got you know unlimited potential on base building. You can go absolutely nuts in there. Um, and then on top of that, we've got a shitload of cars sitting in there that we can use for mechanic skill. So that's a winner all around in my eyes, and it really is going to put our you know, skills to the test this playthrough in the respect that we need to build a base from scratch. Yes, I know there's a building in there already that we can you know, incorporate into the build, but that would be a little bit cheating, and it's a pretty shitty building anyway. So, no, we're going to build an entire you know, structure from scratch within the drive-in theatre and make it the ultimate survival base. And, yeah, I reckon it's going to be an awesome project. Um, I think he's really going to enjoy seeing something be built from nothing. It's a pretty unique playthrough in that respect. So doing a little bit of shouting to grab the attention of any of the zombies here at the driveway leading down to the drive-in theatre, which is also directly across the road from the petrol station, which is the second bonus to living in this location. I thought I'd get as many zombies' attention, bring them here and kill them up, because we're going to be living here now, so now it's about extermination of all zombies in this area. We want all of them gone. Um, we get in there and we clear out the inside of the uh, drive-in theatre and we work good, but then the only thing we've got to worry about is the zombies, you know, coming out through the trees and all the rest of it. So, walking around and shouting out here is probably a good idea just to draw the attention of those zombies and bring them into us. Pretty confident that all the ones at the end of the driveway here were taken care of. We just decided we'd take a bit of a rest, get our breath back, and proceed down the driveway towards the driving theatre and start taking over our new home from the zombies because it's uh, eviction days, boys, and we're here to take over the driving theatre, so time to uh, move on.
thinking it's best to play it smart here and uh, take out the zombies in small groups. We parked the truck at the entrance and that was enough to set off the attention of all of the zombies in that general vicinity. I don't like killing zombies in there on the car park because we're going to live in there and I don't want to have to carry all of their corpses out later on. So, fuck that. We'll come out here and, you know, bring them out here and destroy them out here. Uh, I also like to try to, you know, kill zombies in as much of a group as possible so that when we're ripping up their clothes and shit, it's a bit easier. So, yeah, brought them out into this area and started, you know, just wailing away on them, getting rid of the first group and we go in and pull out another group after that and rinse and repeat. I don't know if it's just me, but that has got to be one of the most satisfying sounds in video game history. Killing zombies in this game is just that. Just that. That sound of when you know you've, you know, caved the zombie's head in. It's just pure satisfaction. Yeah, I, I can never get bored of that sound. It's just beautiful. Every time, just so satisfying, just crunch, just, I don't know, it has to be the most satisfying game sound of all time. So, being a bit worn out after that battle, we decided to take a bit of a breather, head on in, and get our third group. As you can see, there was uh, quite a few zombies hanging around the entrance of the uh, you know, driving theatre because this is our third group, so we've got you know, three groups at least. I think after this group, though, we should be pretty much right. I don't think there'd be anything more at the entrance. And then at that you know, point, we could you know, initiate stage two, which is to drive up to the back end of the theatre and start working our way forward from there. And here we were, exactly where we are going to be building our new house. Um, I built the house basically directly below the big screen, because that's where I like to have it. I built up this end of the yard so that we keep the zombies away from the fences that we built blocking off the front area. Uh, I've noticed that if you sort of hang down this end of the driving theatre, and you've got fences knocked down, you know, knocked up down the other end, that they you know, usually go a little bit untouched because you know the zombies tend to gravitate towards this end and come along the back side of the fence. So, yeah, this is exactly where we're going to be uh, building our base. Thought we'd get rid of all of the zombies up this end and then just, yeah, start working our way down through the car park and seeing what else was here and clearing it out because this is going to be home for, you know, the rest of the playthrough. Or at least for the uh, Rosewood portion of this playthrough. So, yeah, this is going to be the main base using the safe house in town as like a secondary. And yeah, these were the two bases at Rosewood that we uh, planned on building for this, you know, playthrough. After this, we'd have to do a similar setup in Moldra with a small safe house over there, and then a large and main base there as well. Um, might do one at West Point as well on the way through, not sure. And then, yes, the final objective being one over at Lillsville. So, with all of the zombies at the top of the, uh, you know, drive-in theatre cleared, we decided to start walking down and checking out the small house thing down here. Found this zombie here and thought, oh, might as well just let him follow me. Could have killed him here in the car park, but he's not much of a threat, it's just one little zombie. So, led him over towards the, uh, I think it's the projector house. But yeah, led him over there and took him out beside the fence because, once again, don't want to have to drag his corpse out there later on anyway. So, might as well let the corpse walk itself out, eh?
knowing that we're going to be getting trees from out here and blocking off this, you know, back area, I decided that, uh, doing a couple of shouts and trying to grab as much attention from the zombies in the tree as possible would be in our best interest here. Um, I've done this a couple of times in the past and had shit go sideways at this point. So, learning from previous mistakes, I decided no, we would shout, get the attention, bring the zombies to us, um, and yeah, cut down some trees and set about blocking in this end of the driving theatre. Um, it's important to get rid of all of these zombies, I mean, I didn't want to kill the fence and have them knock it down, you know, pretty much straight away as well, so that was the second reason for the shouts and bringing the attention, but I don't know, this is something I've learned over time, that sometimes shouting is valuable at the game. The button's there, and sometimes it's worth using. Proceeding to move over to the second gap that I had to fill in the fences, started shouting again, bringing more attention, and getting the zombies from this area. Uh, as you can see, we're not going to be shy on trees for building our base around this area, and the entire you know, drive-in is surrounded by the damn things. Uh, it would also be good because we'd have these forests here as well, which were at least 70 squares away from our base, so we could do trapping, and trust me when I say this, you'll be surprised at how close we can put down traps um, to the drive-in theatre and actually still collect food. Um, I was shocked the first time I put them down, and I was like, dang, like really that close? But yes, the multiple benefits of living at the drive-in theatre. Um, I've done many playthroughs in this game. I've lived at the fire station, I've lived at houses in Rosewood, you know, like, heaps of different places. But this is one location I've always ummed and ahed about, and it's always been that one that's just been that too big of a job, you know, like, to build an entire base from scratch. But I believe that now I'm at that point of my, you know, experience in the game that I could pull it off. So that's what this playthrough is here for, to test my skills to the ultimate and... Yeah, do what, you know, what most players don't do in this game, which is build an entire base from scratch. I mean, shit, anyone can barricade up the fucking building, but can you build a base from scratch? Having some breakfast after the morning's efforts, uh, we decided that now that most of the zombies down the bottom were clear, the car park was clear and everything was all good, we could actually now head down there and start building the walls required to block it off and looking at the car park as we are driving through we had you know plenty of vehicles here to select from to you know use and you know do mechanics on choose from you know the cars that we could use for storage or shit just yeah unlimited potential with this car park so yeah understand why I decided to build here and it is a huge task but once it's done it's worth it Dispatching our two zombie friends, I decided to start ripping up their clothing, so we're going to need the ripped sheets to do the log walls. It's one of the you know, biggest things that I only recently learned in the game, that log walls take, you know, just cloth and friggin' logs to make, not nails. So, all this time in my previous playthroughs where I've been building everything out of you know, wooden walls, I've been wasting a shit ton of fucking nails. So, doing it the smart way this time, we'll be getting a lot of ripped sheets and building our walls out of logs. dropping off our rip sheets for, you know, organisation sakes, we then proceeded to, yeah, set about chopping down some trees to get these log walls made. With our first batch of trees cut down, we could hear a zombie making some noise, and we decided that uh, I'd probably best be going and get rid of him now, before later. Had another mate come walking in on us, you know, after getting rid of him. So, ripping up more clothes, stealing more digital watches, you know, never a bad thing. And yeah, got back about, you know, working on this wall. With all of our trees cut down now, I decided to gather up the logs and take them over and start, you know, sticking the wall together. I thought we had enough logs, but I miscalculated it as I always seem to do in this game. 
but it was enough to at least get us started at this point, and that was the most important thing. I severely misjudged my timing here, and uh, as a result, I ended up paying the price for it. Because as I was attacking these zombies, that one got that attack in on me, and I was a bit panicky at this moment, thinking, shit, is this playthrough now done? You know, please don't let, after all of the work that we have done, don't let it be undone by that one zombie and that one simple error of just time management. But yes, smashing the group, swinging really slow now because my arm was, you know, injured. Luckily, it was just a scratch and we could proceed on. But yes, that could have been you know, game over right there, you know, once again. And, you know, now that our arm was injured, we were going to be swinging really slow and, you know, less powerfully. So, best to be uh, playing it safe at this point. I was also starting to get rather tired at this point, endurance wise, because yes, we've been, you know, cutting down trees and stuff, so we weren't really paying attention to our, you know, energy levels as we should be. And yeah, uh, this is, you know, a situation that could have went really bad because, yeah, low energy, injured, you know, not swimming to the best of our abilities. Yeah, it could have been really, really bad. Yeah. You've got to be really careful when you're doing this project. I mean, it may look easy, it may sound easy and all the rest of it, but yeah, you've got that. I mean, like, the zombies sneak up from the trees and that, and it can just go really bad. So, run inside to go and take a little bit of a breather. Got interrupted by another zombie, so I didn't get the full break that I wanted, but decided that I had rested enough to, you know, proceed to do the rest of the job. So, removing this zombie, I decided that we would get back down and cut down the rest of the trees and try to get this bit sealed in at least. My gut feeling got the best of me at this point and I decided that yeah nah, nah, we're going back inside. We're, we're resting up and we're doing the rest of that rest. I, I didn't want to risk it. We're already injured, already at a disadvantage, you know, as far as killing zombies. I just, yeah, it was not risking it. So, yeah, decided to push in, have a rest, take care of our wound and then go back and resume cutting down trees. And my gut feeling being right, here came a zombie to fuck with our day. So, yes, taking that little bit of a break, you know, before cutting down that tree was, you know, an absolute godsend. Because if we didn't do that, yeah, he probably would have got us. So, wasn't feeling too confident at this stage of the game because of the injury and such. Just really wanted this wall sealed so that we could at least, you know, know that this part of our base was secure. Deciding that I'd uh, make use out of all of those bandages and clean them so that we could use them for walls and that, and then also needed to fill up my water bottle. Ran inside to go get some water. We now had, you know, more than enough rip sheets for the job, and yeah. Uh, I used to throw away a lot of uh, dirty bandages back in the day until I realised you could clean the damn things, and yeah, now I hold on to all of them. Had some zombies that obviously disagreed with the fact that I was uh, cutting down trees, you know, come over and try to get me to stop that, but uh, we weren't having any of it, so we need these trees cut down because we need this wall built and we need this shit sealed. couple of more zombies that, you know, seem to have issue with uh, me cutting down trees in the general area, so got rid of them as well, and yeah, with that done, I think that was about enough logs as what we would need to get this job done, so proceeded to head inside and take a little bit of a breather, because yeah, we are quite exhausted after cutting down those trees, and didn't want to risk getting eaten as we were doing this little bit of a job, so better safe than sorry.
it was looking pretty quiet out here now so it seems that our efforts of you know shouting and trying to group up as many zombies as we could earlier had you know sort of paid off so that was the main thing uh yeah like sometimes you just gotta yeah get the zombies to come to you and you know clear that area um the spears just you know absolutely a mod spear as you can see we just walk in and just one shot that one you know zombie like it was nothing i was going to head home and have a bit of a rest because it was getting late and we were getting tired but then decided fuck it it's two more panels at the fence just get to it because then we could actually sign it off and say it was done for the day so and a bit of a risk here i decided eh, go out get the rest of the logs and yeah finish the job so two more panels it's all we needed and having those panels done we would then know that at least this portion of the base was safe you know like still had the front entrance to block off and the other side of the projector house near the garbage bins but other than that so far for the day we'd you know got you know what we set to achieve done Happy that we had at least got that portion of the wall done for the day, we decided to yeah, head on home and realise that these three zombies must have snuck in you know, from somewhere when we weren't looking, who the fuck knows, but we'll get out and sort them out because we you know, can't have you see no more. It's you know, eviction day after all and you're getting evicted, so off you go. Quick tip here, when you're really tired and exhausted, if you run the setup that I've been running, which is the bow staff and the spear, when you're tired and exhausted like I am right now, the spear is your best friend, because you still got that chance of that one hit critical, you know, kill, so yeah, highly recommend that. But with that done for the day, we decided that we'd, you know, go to sleep and get stuck straight into day 10, um, and yeah, like, finish sealing off the rest of our yard. So... Day 10 essentially started at uh, 3.20 odd in the morning and yeah, we decided we'd get straight back into it and go seal in this fence. We decided to do a little bit of inventory management before we actually started for the day. It was still a little bit dark and, you know, going out and risking our shit would probably be a bad idea. You know, we still were injured from the day before. So yeah, doing some inventory management, getting all that organised and making sure that we were, you know, set for the day. We, yeah, got ready to go out and get this sealed up. Uh, if we could pull that off today and get it sealed up, we would be absolutely kicking goals, and then the playthrough could really, you know, take off from here. So, yeah, we are finally getting to the good parts of the game, which was the building of the base and, you know, adventuring the map at that point. So taking care of our, uh, you know, little bit of a scratch that we got from the day before. Always important to disinfect your wounds, you know, keep it so that you know, don't die from them. And we're prone to illness, illness and that as well, so it's important for us to definitely keep on top of that type of shit. Uh, we don't want ourselves getting sick. We uh, got straight back into it. Uh, the fence had stayed intact overnight and those zombies had taken it out, so that was, you know, the main thing. Now we just have to seal in this little portion of the fence here. It should be quite a lot quicker than what it was yesterday. So, filling up our bottle of water and cleaning bandages, we set about the work for the day. As we're picking up our first pile of logs, that's when this dude decided that he was going to come and interrupt us. It's always the way when the character's, you know, fully loaded and overweight. The zombie decides that, yeah, now's the moment that I'm going to go and attack that dude. But, yeah, it is as it is. With our first couple of loads of logs, I decided that I would head on in and start knocking up this wall. It's a little bit darker than I would have liked for us to be doing this job, but, you know, the sun is going to be coming up soon, so no stress there. This stage, I decided that, uh, yeah, going inside and having a little bit of a break and, you know, some water would be, you know, good and on the cards, because why the hell not? It also pushes closer to daytime.
remembered that we had some ropes in the truck and then also remembering that you could use the ropes to carry the logs and it did something or something along that that I read in the wiki, who the fuck knows. I uh, decided that yeah, we go grab the ropes and we'll try to stack those logs and make it lighter and all the rest of it. And one thing I can tell you right now is I'm never doing this shit again. Like just no, not even fucking worth it. Just just carry the fucking logs. It's too much fucking around and time consuming. I think this is almost designed as one of those mechanics of the game that they want you to use so that you do get killed. So yeah, avoiding this one in all future playthroughs, never using ropes again. That wall pushed us to level 8 carpentry, so now we're going to have to go out and look for the uh, level 5 carpentry book, because it's the only book that we didn't have, and it was uh, the only one that we needed to read now to get to level 10 carpentry, but we've done that at least, we're at level 8 carpentry. The furniture that we made for the house would be good, the walls would be strong, just yeah, so we ticked off that objective, make it to level 8 carpentry as well. Not wanting a repeat of yesterday's performance, decided that yes, stay on top of the stamina today, stay on top of the fatigue, and not go out and you know risk our shit unnecessarily. So see, learning, learning, always learning. We're almost finished with the second panel over here now, so you know, and we're looking good at this stage. We'd cut down the remaining logs that we needed, and that job was done now. So, yes, we'd sealed off the projecting house from you know the rest of the world, and that was the main thing. There was going to be no zombies coming through here. Uh, at a later date, I might come back with a sledgehammer and you know knock out one of these panels and you know put a gate there or something. But for now, just completely walled off, no access to the outside world keep us nice and safe. Having a cigarette after all of our, you know, hard work for the morning, uh, we now set our sights on the final objective, which was to now seal the front gate, which would be as simple as, I think it's about like four panels and a double door. So yeah, we could get that done car park was then ours and yeah no zombies in here and it should be you know good to start building at that point uh to build this place what i was going to do is probably just yeah stockpile an absolute shit ton of logs and planks and that and do it all in one hit and one big time lapse for you so it's a nice neat video but yeah that was that was the plan over the next couple of days but we get the front gate done for now and that would seal us into the uh driving Decided on lunch, uh, and chips were the call for lunch because we still need to gain a lot of fucking weight. So, yeah, uh, had some chips for lunch, which, you know, sorted us out. This zombie here, don't know where the hell he snuck from, but if he was not going to be coming from that gut no more. This was the only way in and out of the car park now, so however you got in, don't know, but you're gone. But, yes, getting this, you know, front gate sealed up, we would probably have no more intruders at that point, hopefully. So, Ripped up some of the cloths of some of the zombies here because we'd need them for the front gate. So, yeah, set about that and got to work sealing off the front gate so we had no more random intruders walking through the fucking drive through. While we're cutting down trees, just a little bit of a note for the viewers that um, if you have a build here at the uh, driving yourself, that this is about as far as you need to go to set up uh, traps. You know, if you build underneath that big screen at the top, if you actually come down to about here, maybe take about 10, 10 15 steps into the woods there, you can actually put down some traps, and yeah, this is actually far enough away from your base to catch some rabbits. So, this is, you know, foreshadowing where we're going to be using, you know, for our trapping area in the future episodes.
So getting back to the wall and, you know, getting that all knocked up was uh, looking kind of quiet around the area, which was good. It seems that, you know, our initial shout at the end of the driveway when we first arrived and got rid of those zombies and sort of pulled off everything from the trees over that way. Um, the shouting at the back and the coming down to the trees at the back behind the projection house, that had also, you know, got rid of those zombies in the area. And yeah, this area was pretty clean. As long as we didn't go bring in any big, huge hordes down this way, we should be all good. Um, so after, you know, this, you know, is secure, one of our next objectives, which is probably going to be, you know, done in the next couple of days, would be that we would uh, walk around to the entire perimeter of this, you know, drive-in theatre and just shout and just see what we can bring in from anywhere around. Just one big full lap, bring everything from the outside wall close to us and kill it and at that point we would then know that this area was 100% secure and we wouldn't have to really worry about anything. Uh, the next objective after that would be then to walk up the road leading back to Rosewood, annihilating all of those zombies, but that's, you know, where we're heading after securing this place, I suppose. And with our last log panel up, there was only one thing left to do, which was to put up the double gate. And being level 8 carpentry, guys, so yeah, we should be pretty good at this point. Um, Realised that the hinges and everything were in the truck, and we thought we'd best go grab those, because you're going to need them to make the damn gate, you stupid idiot. But yes, the double gate was on, and we were secured. The, the drive-in theatre was now ours. That uh, wire fence there, I was going to come back to it at a later date, and we're going to block that off so that you know zombies can't see through it. That's you know one thing I do like to do. I like to block that off, but then also make a set of stairs that leads up onto the kiosk out the front there, so that we had like you know another escape point. Where, you know instead of using the front gate, we have one that we could climb off you know the top of the kiosk using. This zombie was in here. Now he should literally be the last zombie in this entire car park. There should be no more. There should be no way that they're breaking in. And yeah, it should be now secured. So parking up the truck, we decided that uh, we'd get over and we'd take care of this last zombie, we'd bring him over to the uh, other grouping of zombies that we'd already created, and that was it. That should be now officially an empty car park. There should be nothing here. Nice secure location, ready for us to build our dream base underneath the big screen. Um, the base is going to be two stories high, you know, uh, and all the rest of it. it is, it's going to be a huge base. I'm going all out on this one. Um, putting everything that I've ever, you know, sort of known about games into this one build. So, I've played a lot of other games like Ark, Survival, Conan, and all the rest of it. I love base building. That's my jam. So, we're going to build a cool base here. So, noticing that we had farming and, you know, knowing that we're going to have to plant seeds soon, I decided that for the rest of the day, we'd smash out the farming book because we want that ex bonus on experiences. And, yeah. Next time it rained, we could then, you know, at least get a garden going and have food supplies coming in. So if our book being read and, you know, now being like 2 o'clock in the morning, we decided that we'd uh, put a lot of our loot away into the truck and that and, you know, get a head start on the next day so that we were prepared and we could just get stuck into it which would be us doing the lap of the outside of the uh, you know, compound so that we could go to the remaining zombies. Decided that we'd go rip up some rags off some zombies because when their corpse disappear, the clothes go with them. So we thought we might as well get some, you know, cloths off these guys to replenish what we had used today, you know, before they disappeared. But then, yeah, that was at least, you know, day 10 done and we had sealed in the base and got to our objective and we could now progress forward and build the ultimate survivor's base but i hope you've enjoyed the series so far and you know you are enjoying it and that i don't like asking for subs so i've got to you know phrase it differently 
hope I've earned your sub on this one. I ho hope I've earned it with the effort that I put into this series, and yeah, I hope that you've come along and enjoy the rest of it. But as you know, until next time, you know, have a good one, and look after yourself.